This tutorial looks at coming up with the idea for a website and what's really involved within the idea for a website. So before we kick off, we'll have a look at a simple question. So the first question is, how long would you wait for a page to load? So I want everyone just to jot down very quickly how long you would wait for a page to load. How long from when you click on a link to when the page loads, how long would you wait? The general answer to this question is normally between anywhere from a couple of seconds right up to about a half a minute. That's what people will say. Some people might say, I'd made, wait a minute. But, you know, when I ask this question, how long would you wait for a page to load? Well, the answer is normally it all depends. What does it depend on? Well, it depends on lots of things, really. It depends on the speed of your connection. It depends on the content of the page. With regards to you expect video to take longer than text or images would take and so on. It depends on the speed of your device. So your hardware and your software speed. And depending on how long you would wait for a page also depends on uh, what's on the page. If it's available somewhere else. I guarantee you if, uh, if, if I give out the title of an assessment and everybody typed it into Google and it came up with one response, you would probably wait a while for uh, once you click on that for the page to load. But if it came up with many, many responses, uh, hundreds of thousands of responses, it wouldn't really make any difference. If, if when you click on the first link, if it took too long, you hit the back button and on you go again with the next link. OK, so it depends on a lot of different things. Now, why is this an important question right at the very beginning of a, a web development course? Well, very simply, all of these things have to be taken into consideration. You're talking about, you know, what's on your page. You're talking about the layout of your page. You're talking about your users, your audience. What did, did they have access to with regards to their connectivity and with regards to the software and the hardware and the browsers that they use? OK, um, where are they located? What kind of language should they speak? All of these are dependent on your audience, too. So there's a lot of things involved in the whole process here that has to be taken into consideration. So as well as that, another thing which must be taken into consideration is sometimes when you click on a page, it's already in the computer's memory or the computer's cache. So it loads quite quickly, okay? And other times you'll notice that when you click on something to load, that maybe the text comes down quicker than the, the images or the video. And we often see it on YouTube that the, the video is buffering, which means it's actually loading and coming down as we, as we are watching, okay? So all of these things have to be considered when you're thinking about uh, content, when you're thinking about your website, when you're thinking about you know, promotion and sales of your product and your aims and so on, all of them have to be considered. So very simply, when you look at a web page, a web page is normally made up of many, many different pieces of content. Okay? There's text, there's images, there's, you know, there's different types of images with regards to, and we'll come across these much later in the course, but you could be talking about JPEGs, you could be talking about GIFs, you could be talking about PNGs, you could be talking about videos, you could be talking about any of these things, okay? And these all come together to make up the size of the page. And the size of the page obviously has a big impact on how long it will take to download, okay? Um, so all of those things have to be taken into consideration. So when you're looking at and how long it takes to download. Well, you've just got to remember one thing. Slow pages are the number one complaint about the internet. Okay. So when it comes down to the web and and what you're doing, um, you've got to remember that, you know, don't be slow. All right. Don't be tardy. Just make sure that your page is optimized to come down as quickly as possible. Okay. Put that item in their shopping cart and has engaged in the transaction process is still 70 percent likely to abandon their shopping cart at some point during the process there are a number of reasons for this but one of the number one reasons is uh, slow load times 
during the checkout process. So uh, roughly one out of five shoppers will abandon their cart specifically because the, the transaction process was too slow. So that's a huge number of people abandoning because of speed, okay? When you have a look at something like this here, you can see that a piece of research found that the average home page has a, a best case first load time of 32 seconds. So 32 seconds seems like an eternity when you're waiting for a page to load. But remember, that's, that's the entire time from when you click on the link to when the last item, the last bit of content on the page downloads. And quite often we can have read what we needed to or scanned what we needed to and clicked on another link and be gone before something is still loading on the page. Okay. But we've got to remember that, you know, we've got to optimize these things. So that's one side, 32 seconds, which is arguably way too fast or way too slow, I should say. So on the other side here, you have the definition is the eight second rule. Now, um, there's two types of eight second rule. This one here is going to do with web pages, but the other one is going to do with rodeos. Uh, in this case, we're talking about the actual um, web pages. So what they've found is that one third of visitors will leave a page that doesn't load within eight seconds. Now, eight seconds, again, seems like an eternity to all of us. OK, but this is the first time you've been asked and you've been asked to think about this. It's the first time that we're starting to think of ourselves as you know, website creators rather than website users. OK, so with that in mind, we've got to start thinking about optimizing all of the content that we put in there and, and keep this in mind. We can't lose focus of these types of things. OK, so within this course, I'm going to give you on average 20 to 30 seconds per page. OK, which, guys, that means that I won't penalize you unless it's more than 30 seconds. But if you can get something down to one or two seconds, great. OK, and there's no point in being up around the 30 or 40 seconds if there's no need for it. OK, but just remember that this is the first question. It'll come back It'll come back lots of times throughout the course. OK. OK, so when we started looking at this, we, we saw that the web development process has a number of different stages and we saw that, you know, that when you're looking at this, you're looking at the idea analysis planning, design, publication, promotion, and innovation. Okay. These are the, the different stages we're going to be dealing with throughout this module. Okay. We're going to focus on the idea right now, which is the very first step in the process. Okay. If you don't have an idea, you can't do any of the rest of them. Everything is dependent on that. So we're going to have a look at the idea and what's involved in that. Okay. So first thing I'm going to say about the idea is, you know, with regards to the idea, normally we keep three things in mind. OK, the first one is what's the purpose? What's the purpose of your website? So when you're going to plan the website, what's your purpose? What's your aim? OK. Now, when you think about this, if I ask you what's the purpose of a certain website you're looking at, you will see a lot of these different terms popping up. Information, provision of information, promotion of a product or a service. Engagement, so how you engage with your customers is hugely important and growing and uh, in importance. Uh, customer service, okay? So not only is it a way of selling something or promoting something, but also provide the customer service. So it goes full loop on this, sales, and then other things. Other things could include things like savings and so on, okay? So quite often, creation of a website, while it costs money in the first place to do so, might save us money over time, okay? And it's expected in this day and age. OK, so purpose is extremely important. Second thing, background. So when you're thinking about your idea, you've got to think about um, the background of the company or the concept or the undertaking that you're looking at. So if you decide to create, we'll say, a website for a restaurant, the background would be tell me a bit about the restaurant. OK. Where is it located? How long is it in existence? Is it family owned? What kind of food does it serve? How many servings does it have? How many covers does it have? And so on. Does there take away what kind of, you know, lots of lots of different things. OK, so that those kind of things go into the background. So it's really important for you to figure out exactly, you know, what the background of, of this concept is. And then the third part is the rationale. So why? are you undertaking this? Okay. So 
The purpose might be, I want to promote a restaurant and why are you doing it and why now? So th these are the types of questions you can ask. Why is it important that you're using the web to create it? Okay, it's, it's um, very important that we look at all three of these. Okay, and when you think about any project, this really gives us a good understanding of what we're trying to do. So what's the purpose? What's the aim? What's the background of the company or the concept? And what's the rationale? Why are you doing it? Okay. So, you know, if I turned around and said, listen, the purpose is to promote cycling trails in Cork. Okay. Background, you might say, listen, what's the background of cycling trails in Cork? Are there many? Um, is there anyone, is there a body down there promoting it? Are there any kind of organizations or clubs that will help you to do this? Um, why, why are you doing it? It's the next thing, you know, why is it important to do this? You know, you might say the huge demand and there's not enough information at this point in time. Are you actually, is it just promoting this? Are you trying to sell something or provide a customer service? Are you trying to engage um, cyclists within that region? So you can turn around and ask any of these questions. So that really, these are the different things you got to figure out when you're talking about your idea. So next question is, where do ideas come from? Okay, if I sat all of you down and said, where do ideas come from? I guarantee you somebody will come up with the word brainstorming. All right. And brainstorming is just a nice word for thinking. Okay, so brainstorming is is writing down your ideas, bashing them around with your with, with other members in your group and coming up with something a little bit better. How else might we generate our idea? Well, quite often we'd say this and we go online and we Google it. We'd see what the story is down there. We might look at while we're not creating um, cycling um, tours in, 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 in Wales, we might look at that as an example and say, oh God, look, this is what they do. We might learn from them. And we might say, hold on a second, something we didn't think of is the newsletter or, you know, we think about Instagram as a great method of doing that or whatever the case might be. So, so we might generate ideas through many, many different ways. So there's lots of ways of generating our ideas, okay? So normally when you come to getting your idea in the first place, you turn around and say, well, wh why, why would you do something? And you'd say, well, listen, following trends, and you could say there's a huge trend towards this area. Or you might say that we've looked at this and there's a gap there and nobody's actually exploiting this gap at the moment. Or we're working in this area and we're finding that at the moment, you know, it would be great if there was a little bit more outdoorsy stuff down in about cycling in this region and so on. OK, so there's lots of different methods behind creating your idea. OK, here's an example of why, you know, what techniques are used within organizations to create ideas. And you can see everything from, you know, brainstorming right down to, you know, the whole idea of of card decks, uh, role playing, different things to try and generate ideas. OK, um, sometimes it's a case of, you know, we might even do some primary research. We might actually go out into into the field and we might do a questionnaire or we might if we're talking about, you know, um, creating a website for, you know, a B and B, we might go and talk to the owners of the B and B and say, listen, why would this be good? What do you want us to do? You know, and you might just brainstorm with them and include them in the in the whole process. What I'm going to do in at every stage in the analysis and the planning stage of the web development process is I'm going to look at an example that a previous group have done. And if you look on the website or if you look in Dropbox, there are five previous examples of um, assignment one. OK, and Kilmain and Jail is just one of them. So what I'm going to do is throughout this particular PowerPoint and all the rest of the tutorials to do with analysis and, and um, um, planning is I'm going to focus on Kilmain and Jail. And what it will do is it'll give you an idea of what other groups have done. OK, and there are four other examples up online, all of them you know, are very good examples. They're all over 70%. So, you know, they, they give you a good idea of what, what's in, involved in the different stages, okay? So while I'm not going to read down through the assignment here, I'm just going to point out that the assignment, you know, the examples have good things or bad things associated with them, okay? And generally, these are good things, okay? Um, the Kilmainham Jail um, analysis and planning, okay? Um, 
you know, we're going to call them design specification, but the, the Kamenum Jail design specification is, the only downside to it is it's actually, it's, it's, it's an old enough one. It's, it's actually about seven or eight years old, okay? But with regards to design specification, it's actually showing that they're including these different things in, in their actual plan, which is really what, what I'm interested in, that you do, you know, they're flagging up different things that need to be included um, and to cover throughout your design specification. So, as I said, I'm not really going to read it. What I am going to do is I'm going to focus on different things that they have included in the idea. So, in our case here, I'm just going to jump in here for a second and say, you know, these are the different areas that they've looked at. So, they've looked at the background, they've looked at the operations. So, that to me is looking at, you know, in your idea, I asked you to look at the background of, of the company. They're looking at Kilmainham Jail and they're looking at the background to it. As it turns out, when, when they created this website, Kilmainham Jail didn't have a website, which, you know, even, you know, five, six, seven years ago was absolutely ludicrous considering it's, uh, it's in the top uh, five tourist attractions in Dublin. So when you look at this, it's, 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 uh, it, you know, it's, it's quite amazing, really. So their background talks about Kilmainham Jail, the operations, saying when they're open, what times they're open at, the number of visitors that they've had and so on. OK, the reason for undertaking this project, you can see that there, that's the rationale. OK, why are they doing it? OK, they're doing it because they're actually saying here straight away, it doesn't have a website. And, you know, they're talking about, you know, over a quarter of a million visitors annually. And you're saying to yourself, that's this is a gap. There's a gap in the in 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 the industry that needs to be filled by this particular website. Okay, the chief functions of the website, and this is what I'm talking about, the purpose. So they've looked at these. So what I said to you earlier on, when when we talked about the aim or the idea, sorry, is that you cover the purpose, you cover the rationale, and you cover the background. So in other words, you give what's maybe if you want to call it an executive summary of your project and you give it a, a really good introduction of what it is you're dealing with okay it's good for you as a group it's good for me as a reader to be able to see what it is you're trying to do why it's important to do it and what is involved in doing it okay so in their case here to talk about the chief function of the website is promotion customer service and sales okay so um with that in mind you know, they're the three different areas that they've looked at. We expect to see that.